So there must be a better way to do rotation than those Euler or angle rotations. So what we want to learn about is what's called arbitrary axis rotation. And it's exactly like it sounds like. Arbitrary axis rotation. I want to be able to take an object and rotate it around whatever axis I want. So let's imagine I have 3D space here. And I have some vector out in space. And I'll call this my axis. And just to show that it's 3D, you can imagine here's the shadow, right? Cool. So if it's axis in space, and I want to rotate around that axis. So imagine I have a shape here. I could define an axis any which way I want and then rotate around that. You know, it's not e easier said than done, but that's what we want to do. We want to rotate around some arbitrary axis in 3 space, 3D space, arbitrary axis in 3D space, okay? How do we do it? There's a lot of ways to do it, actually. The, the simple way to do it is we leverage a technique we've already seen with rotation. If I want to rotate something out here, I move it in here, I rotate it, and I move it back. We can do something similar for rotations, okay? So one is we can transform an object using a basis using a basis function to align our axis with um, with one of the coordinate axes. Axes isn't a word, it's axes. Um, with a coordinate axis. Right? So imagine I can take and this is my axis that I've already talked about in the shadow, right? Now what you want to do is, you can imagine I want to rotate that in or transform that so that it's actually lined up with my Y axis, for example, and then I can rotate around Y. If I do that, I can just rotate that coordinate axis. For example, in this case, I could do a rote Y right and then I invert number one so I do a transform like that to so transform rotate and that's an inverse there against my point and if I'm doing a basis function the inverse is cheap it's just a you know it's a normal that's a orthogonal matrix I can just do the transpose it's great so this is actually a pretty nice solution this works well for simple cases And you can see that it's it can be implemented with the techniques you've already learned, right? I have an axis, I turn that into a basis function, I find some orthogonal vectors. It don't matter what they are. I just need to find the transform to line that up with my coordinate axis. I rotate my coordinate axis. I undo that trans undo the basis, and I can do any arbitrary rotation. Unfortunately, there are problems. It doesn't really generalize well. It doesn't let me in animate well. It doesn't let me go between animations. So it doesn't really generalize well. You know, for example, let me draw out one. If I want to do something like this, I have an axis A, and I'm spinning around this axis, and suddenly I want to shift to ax, um, shift to be spinning around a different axis. And so it's kind of like I said earlier, I want to be spinning like this and then, okay, okay, I'll spin over here like that, right? I want to, I want to rotate, I want to interpolate between that. It doesn't support that kind of thing. So how to interpolate some rotation around A toward rotating around B. Maybe you could somehow interpolate the ve vertex 
and then you move it while rotating it and, and <clears throat> it gets tricky. You can do it, but it gets tricky. Okay. So there's a better way. But before I talk about, I'm going to highlight even before I write it, before I talk about the better way, it's a better way that's really confusing and hard. I want to highlight something. A lot of programs, a lot of games, a lot of movies, they get away with using the Euler rotations, they get away with using this, this technique for arbitrary, arbitrary axis rotation. It's enough. And if it's enough for your needs, that's fine. But there's a more complicated way that just opens all the doors and you can do everything you want. And it's a technique called quaternions. Quaternions really annoy my, um, graphic students because they're really hard. And I'll make a big note that proper treatment so proper treatment of this meaning, explaining what it is and how to use it, is way beyond the scope of this course. Okay. So my goal here now is that you know I want to help you develop the intuition of what a quaternion is and why it's useful. Because you're going to come across the notation, you're going to come across them, and it's super confusing. You, you Google it, you'll get the Wikipedia entry for some abstract math. You won't understand what's going on. So my job is to help you just know the basics of what a quaternion is, why it's useful, and to set you up to know, okay, what can it do for me if you want to delve into it. So first, let's explain what this is all about. Um, this is based on a complex number system. with four dimensions. Don't think 3D plus one, that's weird. Don't think spatial. Just go, okay, there's four dimensions up to N. It's abstract, okay? And so we have a quaternion, looks like this. It's A, um, I should say this first. There's four dimensions, one real, a real dimension and three are imaginary yes imaginary numbers just like you learned in high school so then we have Q a quaternion then looks like this a plus I B plus C oops so J J C plus uh, K, D, okay? So this is four-dimensional, and I'm going to highlight this is a real number, and these I, J, and Ks are my imaginary numbers. So knowing that they're imaginary numbers is kind of useful because then I squared is the same as J squared, which is the same as K squared, which turns out to be the same as I, J, K, which is negative one, right? So I squared is negative one, it's an imaginary number. That's so you're probably confused already. But what, what I want you to notice here, okay, it's just a four dimensional number. I have I, J, and K as three dimensions plus the real dimension. I have A, B, C, and D as these kinds of, like, what can I layer there? Yeah, that's a bad idea. I should know enough about color. And these are our, our coefficients. Okay, these are our numbers. So, so far, this is not very useful. It's just a math trick. It's just a math, um, a math notation. But I want, before getting into it, I want to explain something. Having this fourth dimension with those imaginary parts, this creates opportunities for new representations and opportunities for a lot of operations. It's kind of like when we did the homogeneous coordinate. We add that fourth dimension, it just lets us do a lot of things that are complicated otherwise. It just simplifies them. So having this fourth dimension and the imaginary parts, this creates opportunities. Opportunities um, for, for, um, uh, what, what, for rotations. Okay. So, as we saw up here, a quaternion has a real part. So we have a real part 
which is A, and A is a scalar. Okay? It also has this imaginary part. which is our I, um, B, J, C, plus K, D. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. Up until now, it's just a thought exercise. Like, just trust me. We have this notation. We have A and three different imaginary parts, B, C, and D. But now we start saying that these mean something. Let's call A a scalar. And let's actually, look, these are different dimensions here. I'm going to say that's my as a vector. I'm going to treat those three dimensions like a vector. Okay, so A is my scalar value. B, C, and D is a three-dimensional vector, which could maybe correspond to X, Y, and Z. And so then the notation is: I have a quaternion Q is going to be S plus V. It's going to be a scalar and a vector component. Okay, that's it. So a quaternion is math that lets me work on this four-dimensional number, which is a scalar and a vector mixed into one package, and do a lot of operations on it. Now this is, I'm gonna connect it back to our problem though. We can actually um, use these to represent rotation around an axis. So I can, I can just decide this. Okay, I'm going to say S. This is my angle of rotation. And V is my axis of rotation. Okay. So I, I'm going to use that. Like I, have this, I have this number system. I have this coordinate system. And it's a unit where it gives me a scalar and a vector component. I'm like, perfect. It fits my need of rotations. I'm going to make the vector the axis of rotation and the scalar, um, the scalar, the, the the amount of that rotation. So the first problem we have is okay, okay, Jim, you're using this notation to represent your problem, the axis x y and axis x y and z in a rotation, but how do I turn that into an actual rotation? So that's the first problem. That's been solved. So given a quaternion. Q um, equals S plus V. So if you have that kind of quaternion, which is just a four dimensional number, we can generate a rotation matrix. I'm going to call it MQ that rotates S round axis V. Okay, so I have this random notation. That's fine, but now I'm going to actually say, look, I can figure out the algebra. I can come up with a matrix. If you give me a quaternion with a, a vector, a vertex, a vector rather, and a scalar, I can come up with a matrix that, that, that does that transformation for me. There's actually a lot of proofs behind this to show that it's, that it's always possible. But all you really want to, I want you to focus on now is, is this is a four-dimensional number. We have a four-dimensional number, right? It's three for the vert vector and one for the scalar. So I'm going to look at, show some slides real quick. So here's the ridiculous math for converting from a quaternion to a matrix. So x, y, and z are the imaginary components, and w here is our scalar component which we called the A. But if I have this, you can imagine, don't worry about the derivation, you can look that up, but you can plug this into a matrix. There's no sines and cosines in here, just multiplications and addition. And you can m use this to multiply your point and get it rotated in this, a around that axis in space, okay? So you can do that with this matrix. And in fact, there's another, this is the same thing actually. I know that you can look at it in your own time, but these are the same matrices, except this one uses cosine and sine instead. And this one assumes that your quaternion, your axis is normalized to length one. So things like, you know, this last coordinate here, x squared, y squared, z squared, w, yeah, that just solves to one. If it's length one, it just solves to one. It's no big deal. 
So you can come up with these, 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 these matrices that'll, that'll rotate an angle around an arbitrary axis. And I have this math notation that lets me store numbers as x um, as an axis plus a scalar. So, so far so good. In fact, if you use the glrotate command in your program, um, if you use the glrotate command in your program, this is what it's, what it's doing. I'll mention that negating, if you want to undo what you did, all that you have to do is put the, the axis of rotation in the other direction and it changes the handedness of the system, right? So um, that's a nice little side point. So let's come back to my notes. So, so far you might be thinking, Jim quaternions are stupid. Um, oops, I can just use that matrix and forget about quaternions. And that's actually true. Um, so far you can say, I have a, if I know how to rotate, if you gave me a matrix, Jim, I can rotate around an arbitrary axis, then I don't need your quaternions. Except this kind of leaves us where we were with the previous solution. I can rotate things around an arbitrary axis, but how do I interpolate? How do I do algebra on those? So this is where quaternions shine. If I know that I'm storing my axis of rotation and the, and the angle as this notation, now quaternions isn't just a notation, okay? Where am I? So, well, this does enable us to do um, arbitrary axis rotation, which we could do before. Turns out this is a little more computationally light, um, arbitrary axis rotation. So while this enables us to do arbitrary axis rotation, the real benefit here is that quaternions give us an algebra. much more powerful. So up until now, it's just a representation that seems kind of weird. But if I represent my angle in this notation, and at any time, I can generate this matrix, right? At any time, I can come out of quaternions into sane world and use my matrix and actually do the operation. Well, while I'm dealing with quaternions, I can leverage everything else that that math provides. So it's a complete algebra. Okay, so if I'm given so this, for example, a quaternion Q is S plus uh, V, and I have another quaternion P is T plus W, these might be two axes of rotations. We can do anything we want with them. We can multiply them. Okay, we can multiply um, by scalars. Think interpolation. 5% of that one, 95% of this one. You can interpolate between them. It's free. Okay. If you, if you implement that quaternion math, you just do it, walk away, and then go back to your matrix. You can interpolate between those just by using a scalar. Okay. We can add and subtract, etc. So what quaternions does is it gives us access to an algebra that lets us do all the things I talked about. I have an axis of rotation over here and I have one over here. I can rotate into it. Okay, I can do that just with a scalar multiplication. I want 1%, 99%, 298, and you can interpolate between them, figure out the math. Now, it's, a, it's not clean. If you look at how quaternions work, there's a lot of cross products, a lot of math going on, but it's not your job to derive it. If you use a library or if you implement the functions that's written, then you have access to that. So what quaternions give us is an algebra we can use on these rotations. Quaternions aren't really meant for this. Well, it's not only meant for this. Well, that's arguable. It's just a notation in 4D with a vector and a scalar, um, or even not even a vector and scalar, three imaginary components and a real component. You have these three components. We co-opt it to store our axis and our, and our theta, yeah, we'll store that in a quaternion. Then we have access to all this algebra. And at any point in time, we can convert a quaternion into a matrix and apply it to our object. So quaternions are really, um, really, really cool. I'll write out some of this. So this supports 
all kinds of really cool interpolations. Mixing, smoothing, etc. The axis of rotation. And to put the icing on the cake, it turns out that, that quaternions are less calculation. than the other methods okay, that we talked about. So you save com computational time. It hurts your head while you figure it out, but at the end of the day, it saves computational time. Okay, so that's all we're really gonna talk about for rotations.